Oh no, you're going with this? <laughs> Welcome to the Pack Play Series, a new Let's Play Series in which we play Blazing Dragons. Dragons who do Blazing Things. Yeah, we don't want to see that. So welcome here, this is Bando Guy Master. <laughs> and of course we have the bar Ark Baron. Uh, uh, and we're, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, everyone's glad to have us here. <laughs> I'm sure right now. <laughs> <clears throat> and now for something completely different. It's... Mad Playforms, Blazing Dragons. Welcome everyone, I, once again, to us playing a game. And yes, we're not here to sell you a parrot or to confuse a cat. We're here to play games and we are playing with you. <laughs> I mean, we're playing this game with you. That's yes. what I mean, yes. And uh, if you think the Monty Python references are off the charts already, what with me doing a terrible impression of a woman, <laughs> uh, let me tell you, it is very appropriate because we are playing Blazing Dragons, which is as close to a proper Monty Python game you can get. And there is a good reason for that. You see, this is a brief history of the Blazing Dragons franchise because it is a franchise. I did a bit of research too. Uh, yeah, so, as did I. <laughs> so. Yes, of, of course you did. So if I may start out. Yes, this. keep going. You see, Blazing Dragons was the brainchild of Monty Python's own Terry Jones, which you might remember as the guy who directed all four films of the Monty Python's group, uh, which is to say, and now for something completely different, um, uh, the much more notable uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Life of Brian, and finally The Meaning of Life. Yeah. Technically... Technically, they recently released the animated documentary uh, A Liar's Autobiography, would be considered the uh, fifth Monty Python's film, but uh, it was not directed by Terry Jones. So I don't count it with the original Pantheon, so to speak. But anyway, yes, Blazing Dragons came out as a cartoon, a British cartoon, in 1996. And uh, simultaneous to that, this game was released, Blazing Dragons. Yeah. Now, th this is a point-and-click adventure game that was not released for the computer market. In fact, this was meant for the, for the then much more interesting and uh, open market of the console scenario, scenery. That's namely, what I want this to say. Is, namely, this has been released on the PlayStation. The very first PlayStation, obviously. <laughs> yes. Uh this being 1996, it was before the PlayStation really got on the map with Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, so 
before the big games decided to come out and play. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it was also released on the uh, soon-to-be-doomed Sega Saturn. Anyway, um, the thought process behind releasing a point-and-click ad adventure game for the console is actually far more sound than you might think, uh, because uh, in 1996 already the market, the PC market for that particular genre of games, was well and truly bloated already. So the console, on the other hand, was a fresh new market for the genre, so they tried to um, sell this type of game to console users. How did it go? Um, I don't think it went all that well, considering the, there was never a sequel to this. Yeah, and plus, the only notable point-and-click adventure games on the PlayStation was was this, which is uh, not very well known, and the only other thing was Discworld. I forget whether both 1 and 2 got on, or whether it was only the second one that got onto the PlayStation. Well, I would like to reassure our audience that this game is nothing like the Squirrel, the original one. Yeah. That game was awful and it made us mad. <laughs> I've seen a playthrough of Blazing Dragons some time ago. And, um, you know, in between uh, the overall production quality, the writing, uh, scenario by scenario writing, that is, yeah. and also the, uh, the very star-studded voice acting cast, um, surprisingly so, uh, this was a project that had a lot of backing behind it. Uh, you know, it's backing, so it goes behind it. Yeah. <laughs> logically. <laughs> and uh, yes, Terry Jones, a creator of the franchise, was one of the voices employed, obviously, in the casting, in the voice casting. Um, yeah. I will address the voice casting as we go into the game more organically and naturally. Yeah, of course. Uh, but anyway, so a, a brief note about uh, the Blazing Dragons cartoon, which this game is supposed to be the companion piece of. Yeah, <laughs> this is yes. be This is actually the whole kettle of fish that should be interesting. Why don't you go ahead and tell the audience about it? Yes, but before that, why don't you show a five seconds clip of the cartoon? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can show the intro. Dragons and we're bound to say. So already, if you saw uh, the animated opening of Blazing Dragons for the cartoon and the opening of this game, you might notice something significant in that um, they don't really look alike. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit weird, actually. So this game was designed to be the companion piece of the cartoon and to promote it, and vice versa. But none of the characters in it really look the same. They have completely different visual styles and aesthetics. In some cases, the characters are even completely different in personalities. Think... And in some other cases, there are also characters who are not appearing in, uh, in the other medium. I think I can actually weigh in on this one, actually, on what's gone on here. Uh, you see, the game was in production first, uh, so that means all the time and attention for the art went into the game, but then they uh, pushed back the release of the game by a year or two, I believe, because they were making a cartoon based on this game. But the problem is... It seems like no one talked to each other <laughs> during this it, development. Yes, it is one of those cases in which the right hand does not know what the hand that comes out of the forehead was doing. <laughs> so, and the left hand was left all alone, not knowing why they have three hands instead of two. Yeah, so while at first what I just said made sense at first until I uh, said the last part... <laughs> So, this is interesting. We're not going to judge and compare uh, the cartoon with the game during this, this entire uh, experience, but... Madhog may say that, but I'm afraid I'm going to do just that. 
However, I will not be comparing the two, but rather just bringing to light what these differences were, as I find this too interesting to simply pass up, and maybe some of you out there would be interested in knowing. So with that said, anytime a character pops up who has appeared in the cartoon or was replaced, I will do a quick aside about them and point out differences and maybe some tidbits. We're going to be judging this game on its own merit, on what it can offer both in terms of writing and uh, game design, um, compositions and all of the good stuff. Yeah. So once again, uh, after this long introduction is done for, yep. this is Blazing Dragons, a redundant title, but that's the joke. Yeah, it's always and really, the joke. And really, um, as I said before, much of the humor is in the vein of Monty Python's Flying Circus. I do believe uh, the writer of the game actually has experience with the Monty Python group, if I'm not getting this wrong. Uh, but since this comes out of the mind of Terry Jones, you have to expect a lot of the very particular genre, subversive humor and madcap hilarity and all of that. So you have to, and also a lot of puns, a lot of dragon puns. Yes, like Camelot. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Carmel Hot and King All Fire. Yes, you have to expect a lot of this. So anyway, and also, because this game is actually a parody of the Arthurian legends, King Arthur and the Round Table Knightery and all that. Yeah, in this case, <laughs> uh, but, it's a square table. Yes, but with dragons in it. And a square um, table. So, not only this is the closest we'll ever get to a proper Monty Python game, this is the closest we'll ever get to a proper adaptation, game adaptation, of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. But with dragons instead of humans. Yeah, and, uh, well, and a good one at least. <laughs> yes, well, as far as I remember, yes. So anyway... Uh, enough with all of that. Uh, this long introduction was necessary and there is a lot more to talk about. But we're going to address all of those elements as we go on with the game. More yeah. naturally. So let's begin. Okay, so let's get on with the game of Blazing Dragons by Crystal Dynamics, who are very popular back then. <laughs> or did um, they, they've only released a handful of games, including the... Uh, Freaking Duckman adventure game. Oh, oh, it's oh, we have two loading screens. Yes, it's a console game. We did lose a thousand nights, but right. Hey, Rob Paulson. Extraordinary diamond. To start things off, we have Sir George. He wasn't in the cartoon, and instead, we had Count Jeffrey to take his place, who acts as a comic relief villain if my memory serves me well. I've only just started rewatching the cartoon series by the time this video comes out, so any details I miss out, please do share them in the comments section below. And you know, uh, Sir George sounds totally like Dr. Eggman. Listen to him. <laughs> it's it's Dr. Eggman with armor. Mervyn. <laughs> Mine. Yes, so Mervyn in the cartoon was female. Yeah, and a witch. Now over here we have Mervyn, an obvious reference to Merlin. He too was replaced by a witch called Merle. So yeah, ignore mine and Madhog's blatant mistake when we mention Mervyn just being changed to a woman and that's that. Okay, I said I wouldn't compare with the cartoon and I'm immediately doing that. Well, it's very hard not to. Because Right then. Oh, and here's our okay. protagonist. I I'm immediately worried because this is how this world began. With the main character just awakening from his bed. This worries me immediately. <laughs> oh look, we have a dragon jester. Next up, we have Trevette here. Again, not another character that was in the cartoon, but was replaced by a two-headed dragon jester. The one on the left is the constantly depressed Clinker, whilst the one on the right is the perpetually happy Cinder. Unlike Trevette here, their role were played up for laughs. 
while Trevette doesn't bother to make a decent joke at all, which I guess is supposed to be the joke? Uh, yeah. A grouchy one. That's the joke. One more time. I'll be down in nine minutes. Fine. I'll tell the king, our absolute sovereign, master of all he surveys, that you can't fit him in. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. This is not funny, Jester. <laughs> nope. That's the joke. Okay, so immediately, I have to complain about this. Finally, we get to our main character, Flicker. Other than the obvious physical differences that we will mention a lot, Flicker in the cartoon is pretty much similar to this one in subtle ways. But one thing to note, he is more shy about showing his feelings to Princess Flame, which we will see later in this game that this particular Flicker is not exactly opposed to staying out his love for her right in front of her face out loud. Okay, so, uh, first of all, um, these dragons do not have wings, unlike the cartoon. Yeah. Uh... So, by definition, they are not dragons, because dragons have wings. <laughs> they are more like overgrown lizards. Not they are to... blazing, they are blazing lizard, lizards. Awesome. In fact, in fact, not even that, not even that, because... They do not spit fire naturally, they had to ingest coal or something along those lines in order to spit fire. So they are not blazing dragons so much as they are sizzling lizards. Oh. It's Monty Python's The Sizzling Lizards. I guess they must have watched Flight of Dragons and just took notes from that since uh, dragons in that world in Flight of Dragons okay. movie have to eat diamonds in order to keep their uh, flames alight. Okay, so technically a dragon has to have uh, six limbs. It does have six limbs, uh, but usually, but usually uh, the third pair of limbs are wings. So I'm not buying that. Well, this is not a real dragon. Hashtag not my dragon. Yeah, uh, th this is just a dragon tour or something. <laughs> no, this look, it's it's an overgrown gecko. No, no, no. Look at, I mean, look at it. It's like. It's a, it's it's a tour. It's like a, it's well, it's definitely not a minor tour, but it's like you know, well, not a centaur is what I meant to say. But uh, okay, no, it, it, it looks like it looks like two people in a dragon costume. <laughs> yeah, well, three people if you count the uh, uh, the second pair of legs. Never no, mind. The no, no, the second pair of legs is the second person. <laughs> I mean, to be for there to for there to be free people, you would have to have, uh, say, um, oh. eight legs. Oh, I found this. The inventory. All right, so um, I should point out. Obviously, we are emulating this with our PlayStation One emulator. Um, this should be an interesting story for the bar to tell. Not really. Not that long of a story, really. I just got the game working. Uh, yes. The um um. The pad and the program I use in order to get my PS3 pad to be seen by the computer didn't want to work today for some reason. So and that's weird because it worked out pretty well with the Tail Concerto. Yeah. So uh, I might as well count my blessings that this is just a point-and-click adventure game. So that means I could just use the keyboard easily. Yes. I mean, uh, this goes against everything you think you know about gaming, because the VAR is forced to play a point-and-click adventure game with a keyboard, as opposed to be playing it with a freaking Mouse. PS3 controller, because that's also intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I had to... So, yeah, I have, so, yeah, I'm forced to use the keyboard instead of the pad, which, again, is not as bad as, as long as this... As this game is not Tales Concerto, I'd be up in arms if I had to play that. Okay, with a keyboard. so we okay. better start to look around. My handy little clicker is a fine invention. The practical applications of which escape me for the moment. What do you mean? What does it do? What a splendid little invention. Perhaps someday I'll come um, to You'll find out eventually, what I guess. A splendid little invention. Okay, so he's not going to say anything else about it. Okay, nope. so triangle is the uh, uh, the inventory. It's my okay. Pavlov. 
Pavlov. Oh, let's trust out then. Uh, let's see, how do I get... Ah! Yeah, you... Yeah, it's not dissimilar, the control scheme from a game like Sam and Max. Okay, there's, okay, this is gonna pick things up. Hello, little friend. Anxious to show all the nice people what a well-trained moth you are? Yeah, let's see it. Pavlov, where are you going? You're setting a terrible example at the beginning of the game. Bad moth, bad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, well, we have an empty jar. Well, but, but, uh, that's useful for us. Uh, let's take this book. The inventor always has his invention book. Invention book, eh? Yes, invention book. Let's take a look at this invention book. Oh gosh, there's a loading screen for the invention book. It's a console game from 1996. There is a loading screen for everything. Provides the power source. Okay. The scrubber spins with enough force to clean just about anything. So, okay then. Hmm. So I guess you were trying to make the shower. Oh, this will be important for later, you, when you will have to invent a way to dish the washes. I mean, to wash the dishes. I mean, this is right here, an invention to wash the dishes of the dishing washing. And I say, yes, I say it is for washing the dishes, an invention that I made for dishing washing or washing the dishes. Indeed. Okay, so... There are no more inventions back here. So, in other words, you only have three inventions. That's... Not well, very... that's no, that's most that's more inventions than than most people, or should I say, dragons, or should I say, lizards, can come up with in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to how many lizards? I mean, can... I mean, is this not a cheese shop? I mean, is this not a video game? <laughs> what do you mean that's treasure? That looks more like junk. There's like metal pieces and wood. Wayne calls it my junk pile, but one dragon's junk is another dragon's treasure. Well, I guess that means Flame wants you to clean up your damn room. Otherwise, she's not going to be giving you the time of day. I have a cracking okay. good view of Camelhot from my window. Just like Windswind yes. had from his window. Yeah, yeah well, you know, the only difference is that uh, in that game, he had a dragon outside the window. But in this game, we are the dragons. <laughs> and by that, I mean the overgrown lizards. <laughs> Apparently he drips lighter fluid. Can I talk to the okay. bed? Can I do anything with this? I have no use for it while I'm okay, is there anything else we need to pick up? I'm Hello bed, I'm going to sleep in you tonight. Get ready. Oh. I would never move it. It's the last thing I see when I go to sleep and the first thing I see when I wake. Oh, is this uh. a picture of your apple of your eye? It's a photo of Princess Flame. She's the apple of my eye. The cream in my coffee. She... The frosting <laughs> on my cupcake. I'm sorry, the apple of my eye. The cream in my coffee. The frosting in my whatever. Yeah, he's, pr he's basically throwing all the typical lines a love-struck hero would have. Yeah, well, you know, the princess is not nice at all. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, which is the complete opposite of how she was in the cartoon, might I add. Well, it's a quite a nice desk there. I mean, I mean, you could have had worse. I mean, you could have had one made of wood. These are all the textbooks from my famous inventor's home study course. Uh, uh I... let's see. Is there a hat in the on the floor you can grab or oh, not? Wait, I should probably go back in now because I saw did see his pajamas in there. I I did ha pick up his hat though. His sleeping Loading. Cat. Yeah, loldings. That's only for sleeping and it's nowhere near bedtime yet. Well, why do you take your sleeping hat though? Okay, let's get out of this proper. Oh, hello, hello, candlestick. Hello, this... Let's steal. Hello, hello, hello. Is this not a cheese shop? Okay, I'm going to show something here if I can do that here. Uh, let's see, see how. 
Ah, here we are. Memory card. There we go. I did test this out, so it does work. Well, that's good. So, yeah, we have a fully save and load feature in this, which is good. Uh, let's continue the game. But strangely enough, it has a password system this game as well. I don't know why it has that. Okay, just um, go into the first room you see. Let's start with exploring the place. Yeah, as per usual when it comes to these adventure games. Let's go into this library looking place here. Well, maybe because it is a library. I mean... Oh I'm... wait! Oh wait, is this not a cheat shop? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. And let's make sure we do not see an orangutan or monkey of some description. Uh, no. Twilight. No, there isn't anything the so course? evil in this game. Why, yes, you are Captain Obvious for, for the day. Thanks for uh, noticing there. You know, it's kind of displeasing to see how this squirrel tried oh, so hard to be a bad Monty Python gag sketch comedy joke um, instead of being actually this squirrel. <laughs> yeah, that, well, it did, it did well to be Discworld for a while until the end. <laughs> yes, for approximately five minutes. This chart denotes endangered species, which are protected by law. This will be important for much later in the game. Okay. But of course we have to have a freaking loading screen to see everything! Okay, cockroaches. There's only two of them left. And they're not even speaking. If they don't kiss and make up, the species is almost certainly doomed to extinction. Oh goody, that's wonderful okay, to know. What's, the, what's, what, what, what's that, the man-eating hedgehog? Yeah, it's a man eating hedgehog, apparently. Oh. And what's that other thing there? Flat... Flat build... Free feathered Mina. Okay. Poor I was guys. expecting a free headed monkey. Birds with such excellent taste. Unfortunately, they taste excellent to the hedgehogs. Oh. Yeah, now this is not important to anything. They sent in a mediator. This does not tie into anything in the game. Um, it's just a... Uh, um, what's the word? Um, World flavor. building? <laughs> flavor text. Okay, let's get out of this room. So it doesn't seem like... Oh, wait. I did see another doorway. So I wonder if we can go th far further in this library. Mm, no. No, no, you can't. Librarian Pure Flame might be taking a nap back there. I probably shouldn't. You can't. There is nothing there for you. Also, character will never see, most likely. No, no, you will see him. Oh, him. It's weird. Librarian Pure Flame sounded like a woman to me. Everything sounds like a woman to you. <laughs>